hi there kings and queens thank you for tuning in welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi darling welcome my name is lily my ogs i appreciate you guys thank you for always tuning in thank you for thumbsing my videos up thank you for commenting thank you for sharing just doing all the right things i appreciate i see you okay may the universe bless you so y'all i'm still here in kita and today we are going to be exploring this castle the abandoned fort Prizacin, that was built in the year 1784 by the dennis so today we are going to tour and also there's a big lesson here never you judge a book by its cover i never knew that in practical until i came here you see the thumbnail of this video you would think oh okay oh this is no it's not fake it's real it's actually this castle when it was new and then the inside of it and the outside don't look nothing alike and i'm going to show you what the outside looks like so if you're judging a book by its cover after watching this video don't do it because you'll be missing a lot okay if you judge a book by cover you get to miss the important parts all right so as always i go here and then the tall guard want to show us everything there's something i want to see that this castle here i mean this fort here located here in keta is different from all that have visited and i'm going to tell you why i have been privileged to be to cape coast the famous castle the cape coast castle in cape coast i have been privilege to be there which um a lot of world leaders that that's the most famous one and of course though i haven't been to emina and i've not been to Osu castle but cape coast and this one in here you get to see practical evidence of their existence here than cape coast in this place you can see their kitchen which i'm going to show you later in the video you can see their chairs you can see their material the actual thing they were using to to do their trade trade by butter where they buy human in exchange with those things all of those things are here and they have a lot of things they are bed they are a lot of things evident when you visit you know that oh wow see this one see this one even the pot they use in cooking everything is here and i'll show you in this video so keep on watching all right and i have one or two words to say to us we that you know we constantly blame other people for our problem oh they are the one that stole our whatever even the things we don't have and <laughs> God forbid, we may never have in Africa. We blame other people for coming to take it when we are our own problem. Because when these people came into power, into this trade, this horrific trade, if we, our people, have said, no, we don't do this, we can't do this, I can't betray my brother for money, I can't betray my sister, I cannot sell to you, they would have gone back. But before, because everybody, at that time, the people indulging in this, in this trade, were being desperate to make it a lot of people are like that up to date so before we go on blaming other people for selling and buying especially those buying we should think about the people selling to them because anywhere you go and you hear there's a particular vice 
or a dangerous trade happening in that country or in that area it means that it's booming there it's doing well so for them to came to africa stayed and succeed and stayed here for this long it simply means that our ancestors then encouraged it and a lot of people are still like that they will do anything for this money they will destroy others envy others they will do, they pull down they will do anything the people still kidnap others in some part of the world right now and you see you are not a slave master some people have children young people they are not their family members that are living with them they are maltreating them or even a family member they are maltreating them so we we are still there until we address all of these issues we are still living in this coming here angered me in a way but i'm that kind of person that i rather instead of going back to the past since i can't i can't turn back the hand of time to correct something I'd rather move forward and try my best to keep it straight and you know make sure that it doesn't repeat itself this must never be allowed to happen again to anybody these are the chain that we use to tie a human being a man or woman that never stole from anyone a man or woman that did not commit any crime you would just be and you would disappear they won't see that person again and they don't know where to look for that person Issues like that still happen in some parts of Africa. We have to do better. Now, look at the outside. Like I told you, it doesn't look anything like the inside, right? We'll get there. So, we're going outside. You get to see. Look at how it looks. Gradually, it's withering away. Or once upon a time, this place accommodated the rich and powerful, the most feared. But where are they today? They are no more. This is what they have left behind. It's just a matter of time, like everything you are desperate and killing and doing, destroying for, will just wither away. So the best thing is live your life and let others live and just try your best to be okay with what you have and keep moving. One day, everything going to be fine. So, but this tour continues. I wish I could allow you hear directly from the horse's mouth, that is the tour guard. But due to copyright claim because of the background music that was playing very loud, I had no choice but to mute this video and, you know, voice it over. Because in this video, he explained that tri um, slaves that were brought in from Nigeria, from Bini, from Togo, all were taken to this points and also to Cape Coast and Emina and Osu you get it so and then the ones from Africa Coast were also taken to Emina and Cape Coast so the reason is very what I'm trying to the point I'm trying to make is very simple when you see sometimes we see our African Americans brethren coming to Ghana and don't want to leave they get to Ghana for something else. But when they get here, they'll be like, oh, I'm going and I'm coming back. We get to say a lot of them daily, you know, almost all the time that we don't get to post on YouTube. And they have that one thing in common, them feeling at home, feeling the love, feeling the vibe. It is because Ghana played host to every single black man you're seeing today over there on the other side. They have at some point in their life been to Ghana. They were here, 
their ancestors were here because before you are exported out of the continent you make your way they'll transport you to ghana where they decide where you are fit to go where they sell you off so you see ghana is home to every single african-american that is why when they get here i've met a lot of people when that comes to ghana for something else oh and they all of a sudden they want to go and come back they'll tell you oh my god i love it here i'm going and i'm returning just like that and before you know it the person is here doing a lot of things doing a lot of incredible investment living here it is back to their roots this is it before you go to any other even if that particular black american is not directly a Ghanaian back in those days but because this is where they step their foot last we hear stories of african americans you know telling us in their interviews oh I, I was at work i got the call to return to africa oh i was doing one or two things and i had the call to return to africa and it may be sounding like what do they mean yeah this is what it means like they are being called back home is a spiritual thing and i'm 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 happy that everybody have a choice right now to either return or stay back or just basically like the identity have been found so and i'm glad that this trade is no longer you know um it's no longer supported i wouldn't say it's no longer legal because it was never legal it was illegal so but then people supported it for it to boom but right now a lot of people no longer do this they no longer support this we can't give our brothers away for anything i know there are people who still practice this yeah but it is us against the few and that us will never ever support something like this so let me continue to take you guys around show you guys those things in practical like i told you there are evidence here that these people were here also i'll take you guys to the kitchen all the things they use in cooking the grinding stone so many things you can see when you come here i one of the this is one of those spots that everyone should visit as, as you can see some of the people in my video here came from distance they came from far away to view the history of this fort there are a lot of things that are still here that you can see there are bags and there are chairs there are pots a lot of things that showed you for real that they were here so my concern right now is how are they going to preserve this history because gradually it is well withering away the building is gradually withering away so what can the government or the community do to preserve this history because for me coming here it was more practical than where i have been before like places i have visited in regards to this trade there we get to hear but here we get to see and hear you get it so the inside of the the fort is still looking strong and very it looks like something that still have a long time to go but the outside is so alarming as it looks like it's going to collapse this minute so i don't know how this can be preserved professionals in the building you can discuss it discuss this um concern with the right authorities if there's anything they can do to preserve history this history has got to remain because when you understand your history it helps you to do better it helps you to work on things that um, you probably have you know wouldn't have so the tour guard was telling us that some point of this fort is where the dennis governor as the slave master himself or themselves will select any of the young ladies they like among the slaves that you know are being brought in they'll select anyone they like and just you know use it i mean have a, have whatever with her and then get her pregnant if you get pregnant uh -huh, give birth to the baby some of them their babies get taken away from them and sent across so it means you don't get to see your child but that was then like i said i hope that you like this video and that you continue watching i want to just see they have a lot of similarity all the 
castle that I've, I've been to. But this one, to me, like I said, it's more practical. I can see evidence of everything. So we are going to go to the seaside and see. The truth is their beak here is very, very clean. Very clean. Very, very clean. So I'm glad with the state of how the fort is looking. I mean, in terms of maintenance, like cleaning and all that, they keep it clean and smell free. But my concern is how the building itself is looking from the outside. Like it's going to collapse this minute. So we made our way to the kitchen where we get to see their pots. You see even the firewood used then, they have successfully preserved it. And this is why everybody that want to learn history, once they get to Ghana, they make their way to this other, I mean, to this particular fort here in Keta to see things in practical, all right? Okay, so guys, continue watching this video and don't forget to like, share. I will see you in my next one. Dungeon, they miss the slaves so that they will not communicate to plan to escape from them. Mm. 